There will be no wheel spin this week because we did a preview event, so this is like a special episode. Hello everyone, Johnny Hurricane here from GamersHeroes.com and welcome to Best With A Buddy where Smith and I play a co-op game for a few hours, give our general impressions, what we like and dislike, and then give a fun factor score. Games today aren't cheap. 50, 60, 70 dollars, it really adds up, especially if you and your buddies are going to pick up multiple copies. We're going to break down the best and worst of all things co-op, and today we're diving into Back for Blood. We recently got invited to a Back for Blood preview, Smith and I, so this is not an official review. This is just us coming back, talking about what we played co-op in the preview, just so we're all clear. Back for Blood is a Left 4 Dead spiritual successor with new and innovative ideas. It is a first-person zombie game where you fight hordes of infected with friends. Back for Blood is for Left 4 Dead fans. Honestly, I think it's just a straight-up clone, and I'm not saying that as a bad thing. It's also for players of all skill levels because easy difficulty is very easy, but you can ramp it up to some serious challenge if you want. And it's also for deck building fans because you get a lot of cards and you put those on your various characters for new equipment. For Blood is definitely for shooting fans. It's a high quality shooting game and it's full of zombies. So if you like killing zombies, this one's for you. It's got a cast of unique and interesting characters that have the same banter back and forth as the Left 4 Dead guys. And it's a really good game if you want to troll your teammates out of the lobby. Back for Blood is not for fans of the original Left 4 Dead versus mode. There is a versus, it's not the same. We'll get into that in a bit. It's not for fans of the OG Special Infected. There are new ones and there's some variations, but again, not quite the same. And it's not for people with ketoautophobia. Back for Blood is also not for gamers who like to, you know, take in the sites, go check all the closets and everything. Not a good idea in this game. Also not for people with antisocial tendencies. Communication is a key factor in success in this game. And it's also not for people who are fans of, are not fans of replaying levels over and over. Because you, if you want to get the most out of this game, you are going to be playing levels again and again. Now that we've gone over who the game is for and not for, let's take a deeper dive and look at the best and the worst that Back for Blood has to offer. One of the best parts of Back for Blood is the card system. So, I'll be honest, I'm not really a big fan of deck building in games, but something about this one I enjoyed quite a bit. So let me just go and explain it really quick. Before you enter a match, you set up your deck. Now, when you enter a match, you get like 30 seconds or something like that, and you get to pick which cards you're bringing in with you. Some of them are like, hey, you get 10% more HP or more stamina. You start with a certain tool or a certain weapon. A, maybe you revive someone quicker, but you're going to take more damage. Now your whole team picks from their selection of various cards. There, I have no idea how many cards there are total. It seemed like there was a lot, but you pick your cards and then it goes into a pool. So if I select the 10% HP and Smith selects the 10% stamina, that means we got both those buffs. So there's team buffs and solo buffs. So you have to decide which ones are going to work for you and your team. Uh, Smith, uh, you like the card system, right? Yeah, I love the card system. I think it, it, it has clear archetypes, you know, so you can build towards a medic role where your healing mm -hmm. items will do more healing, your reviving will do quicker reviving. Uh, you can go down more down the explosive route. And again, a lot of these buffs are sort of team-wide. Um, so you can sort of hyper-specialize into a specific role. You can be a jack of all trades. And it's gonna be very interesting to see how the meta develops as a team, whether everyone just focuses on single powerful cards or actually trying to build their, their roles out. And you can find these during levels as well, which get add to your deck as you progress. And then you can buy more with supplies that you get for completed missions to add to your deck and further customize as you go. So if you're not a fan of it, there's predefined decks that work perfectly fine. They will not hinder your progress. But if you really want to dive into it, I think there's so much space for custom builds. It's one of the most exciting parts of the game and not a feature I ever would have put into it. Like in a million years, I would have said this is never going to work, but it, it does work. Yeah, and just so we're clear, there is also versus cards, but it's a completely different deck. So if you're stacked on one side does not mean you're stacked on the other side, which that was pretty much one of my biggest worries to begin with, but quickly alleviated. So that was good. Um, another thing that I really enjoyed about it in a lot of these level based uh, instance based games, right, where you load into a level and you get to the end of the objective. Let's be real here. In this game, your objective nearly always is the same thing. Get to the safe room, fight your way to the safe room and get there. But on the way, there's a lot of different objectives that pop up. Of course, you've got your casuals like, hey, let's let's just defend this spot until the gravel thing puts all the gravel down so we can make a hill and go over it. You know, defend the spot. They're easy peasy. But on top of that, you have other objectives that are a little more, a little more tricky. One time we had this boss spawn, which we'll, we'll get into in a minute. And he just spawned straight up out of the floor. We were not ready for him. He just popped up. Uh, we dealt with him, thankfully. But 
that was just something that kind of caught us off guard. There's a couple other objectives as well. One of them was we had to blow up a boat, but there was this nonstop horde coming at us pretty much the whole time. So we had to work as a team, fight our way to the explosion point, set the bombs, and then fight our way out because we had a minute or so before the boat exploded. It's a very, very tense. Uh, one Smith brought up before when we were talking about this, actually, you have to get boards and put them in the window to make the safe room secure. And there's just little things like this that kind of make you switch it up as you're playing through the levels. I really appreciated that because I didn't, we played about three hours, I think total. And I didn't get bored, even though you're killing zombies pretty much the whole time. Uh, Smith, you, you with me on that? You like the objective system, at least from what you can recall? Yeah, I think it's, it's a natural evolution from the Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 formula. So Left 4 Dead was very much, you know, structured, get to the safe room. You had a couple of bits where you had to defend and stuff. And then Left 4 Dead 2 brought in the bigger finales, you know, where you had these much grander, much longer sort of, right, sit here and defend this for this amount of time or you get wiped. I think this is a general blend of the boat one, which was right at the end, was intense and difficult. Even on, we weren't even playing on hard, we were playing on like the average difficulty and it was rough. This was never ending zombies, never ending specials. It was really difficult. But before that, we had, you know, sort of five or six other sort of mini finales as you build up. You know, we were blowing up stuff and blocking stuff, and it, but it was it was mixed enough to keep you on your toes. So you got you to a new area, you're never quite sure what you're about to do. So it definitely made it exciting. I thought, yeah, start to finish, I really enjoyed it. I didn't see any of the objectives as repetitive. I think the only one that was repeated, we had to activate a digger twice or something like that, a tow truck. Oh yeah, I, I, actually I remember mentioning, didn't yeah. we just do this? Yeah, that's right, you're right, we did have to do that. But I think that was even like the same level, so it's kinda, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. But the reason this all works is something that Smith really enjoyed and brought up, and that was just the straight up the polish. The game is very polished. Smith, I'm gonna let you go into this one because you're the one who brought it up, but I completely agree. Yeah, I think for me, with the, especially with shooting games, I'm not a massive shooting fan, not the competitive ones anyway, but after you know, 20, 30 seconds of playing a shooter, you can feel the quality immediately, the impact of the weapons, how you're holding the weapons, the viewpoint of the weapons, everything about shooting. And it comes across immediately, you know, it's sort of got Halo, Gears, you know, those games where you're shooting, you're like, wow, this feels good. I feel the shots, I feel the, the victories, it's, everything was great. And I think the, the polish spreads across the combat, especially melee too, the melee swing. It's not mm -hmm. as easy as Left 4 Dead because you've got a stamina bar now. Yeah. Um, so you can't just sit in a corner and shoot a stack and spam the axe away, but it's uh, just the overall polish of everything. We had absolutely zero issues once we were in a game. There was some matchmaking stuff, which is always going to happen at pre-release events. But other than that, it was it was so polished and the combat is is, is top draw, proper AAA for the shooting. I think that really sets it apart from other games that try to imitate the zombie formula, but don't really pull it off very well. Yeah, and like I said, I completely agree, but I'm going to go ahead and go into the melee. Like, I, I don't know if Smith used it, but I actually use the axe. The stamina, my character had a lot more stamina, so it wasn't as big of a deal. Characters do have various stats, by the way. We didn't bring that up, but uh, they're not that big of a difference. But the axe itself, very, like, impactful swings, which is exactly what you want. Uh, so when I would hit something in the head, I was like, ooh, I... I really enjoyed it, but it was just very hard for me to use that axe over a fully kitted out assault rifle. It just didn't make any sense. It felt good, but I just, I, I was built towards guns, so I had to give it up eventually. But I did enjoy it, and it did feel really good smacking a couple zombies in the head with uh, the fireman's axe that, uh, you know, we just found, someone's like, here's an axe, and I was like, I will take it. And uh, yeah, I had a good old time with it. Um, and then the last thing, this is kind of a, a, a joint effort between me and Smith that we really, really, really enjoyed. Uh, so at this preview event, there, I, I pride myself personally on being better than most journalists in the industry, just because I there's a difference between a gamer and a journalist. I'm a gamer. I'm not really a journalist. Smith's the same. He's a gamer. He's not a journalist. We pretend to be journalists, but really we just do reviews and previews, yada, freaking yada. So there was a versus match. Uh, I think there was actually two or three versus matches, but we were having some a little bit of trouble getting into a match. But when we finally did the first one, the guy that we were with, because it was four players on both teams, and so we had random people with us, he was like, yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes. And by the time we our defense part was done, it was like five minutes, and he was like, okay, I don't think they're beating that, is basically what he said. So then we switch over and we win, no problem. You know, it was pretty average. I think it took about two minutes for the first beat, right? I think that was what it was. You're about right, yeah. Okay, no problem. Okay, but we got our bearings. We figured out special infected, tall boy for life for the record. Um, and we went to the next level again. We won pretty handily, uh, held up 
um, to the end of the objective. And then we beat them in about 45 seconds in the second round and they all quit. So that was one of my favorite parts was smacking those scrubs in 45 seconds. Smith, I know you loved it too. It's the same thing with Left 4 Dead. You know, when you've got four people that are all sharing the common goal, you know, let's grind these guys down as quickly as possible and everything just sinks off. You know, you've got the, the what was your guy, Tall Boy? Tall Boy? Yeah, so he basically runs in and just smashes the crap out of everything. I happened to stick one of them to the floor. As I stuck him to the floor, all of his allies went to save him and then Johnny just ran up with the Tall Boy. He was just, just one of those oh. poetry motion bits where everything was absolutely perfectly executed, almost randomly. We sort of prior planned a little bit of it. Yeah, and it's like obviously it's not fun for them. You know, no one played the game before, but it was just that victory in such a quick time. Yeah, it felt fantastic. It's been fun. Yeah, it felt great. <sighs> However, well, we're about to get into verses in a moment. So now that we've talked about the best that Back for Blood has to offer, let's talk about the worst that Back for Blood has to offer. Uh, Smith, I'm going to bring this one over to you because I liked verses in Left 4 Dead, but you, I would. Let's just go ahead and say it was an addiction for you. So go ahead and start with that. Yeah, so let me start briefly just by saying our normal format for this is we have four things we talk about, the four worst things in the game. We couldn't find four. So that's already saying a lot about the game. But one thing that stood out massively was the verses. Now, it's not a bad system per se, but they already had a formula that was fantastic. The Left 4 Dead versus mode was unique. It was engaging. It was challenging. You know, it definitely had its issues as time got on and people got more competitive and stuff, but the first sort of five to six months especially was just an absolute blast. And what they've done is they've kept certain aspects of that formula and tried to blend it with this battle royale garbage where you're on an ever, ever shrinking map as these bugs come in. I don't know, the bugs didn't make any sense to me. And over time, the map shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and then you die. If you stand in the bugs too long, you take damage, you know, typical battle royale stuff. I just think it really cheapens the experience. They had something that was infinitely better. And I think the only bonus to this is you, you can probably get in and out of a game in five, 10 minutes, as opposed to, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour left for dead. So people's attention spans are generally getting shorter. So maybe that was it. It's possibly it was a COVID thing. It was a lot easier to get these out, balancing it on one maps. Well, I'll assume that's the thing it was, but yeah, I don't know. For me, it just it didn't compare. I, mean, I know you had a good time, Johnny, but do you think it compares to the original Left 4 Dead? Not, not, not by a mile. I mean, the best part of Left 4 Dead was getting to that helicopter roof level, that part at the end, the finale of the hospital area, and and, and fighting on there because the, the, the hunter, you know, you could knock people off the ledge tank, you can knock people off the ledge, and this is just a circle shrinking. As the survivors, you have to stay within the circle, and eventually it got so small that we didn't have cover. We were just in a circle. It's like, okay, last stand, let's go. And like Smith said, maybe it's attention span because when we when we talk about surviving for like five minutes, we made it to the last, like the bugs were on top of us and we were still fighting. It was, I don't know, it's very fast. So yeah, if you like it, you'll. I, I feel like the longevity is just not going to be there, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, I could probably play that we only saw what two maps let's just say there's four or five just for argument's sake sure. i could play it for 10 20 hours before i get bored because it's it doesn't have any of the the ambush points when we were playing through the campaign we were sitting there and like oh that would be a fantastic point for a smoker you know this is mm -hmm. a great point for a boomer and obviously yep. they've got sort of similar ones but they're not the same there isn't any sort of boomer that attracts the undead there's no smoker to pull you away or anything like that um and yeah i just i don't know it just it's something that I'll jump in, I'll have fun for a few hours playing. I can't see how a competitive team of four people communicating cannot reach the very end. It is very simplistic. You just stay far enough away from each other where you're not going to attract the same hits, but you're close enough mm -hmm. to help each other out. It was very, very simple, very easy to do. Yeah, I don't know. I just It wasn't for me at all. I'd sort of, yeah, it's the biggest let down of the whole experience. Yeah, I'm with you because up until that point, we had gotten the invite and uh, I was like, oh, sweet. We're actually going to get to do some verses. And then Smith was like, well, you see what the verses is. And then you look at the email and you're like, ah, oh, huh? And then it didn't work to begin with. So I was like, yeah, maybe we're not going to get to play it at all. But yeah, I mean, we got into it and it was, it's fine for what it is, but it's not, it's not what it should be in my opinion, which is unfortunate, especially if you're a big Left 4 Dead fan. I know for a lot of people, Left 4 Dead is a co-op shooter for Smith and I, it is a versus game and it's, not there unfortunately 
So just just know that if you're expecting the verses from Left 4 Dead or Left 4 Dead 2, it's not the same. You do get to play as the infected. They do level up and they can change and mutate and things like that. But again, the match is only gonna go potentially three rounds. So you're gonna be playing potentially 20 minutes and then you're starting back from scratch. So I don't know. Um, it does seem like the type of thing that perhaps down the line they could be like, hey, versus update. You guys can play through the levels as the infected now. But as of right now, to my knowledge, there is no, no indication they're going to implement that, which is unfortunate. But like Smith said, could have been a COVID thing and we might get it down the line. Uh, but I'm with Smith. By far, the worst part of the game for me was the versus. Despite the fact that we whooped some tail, I, I was still let down. Um, but there was a couple other things as well. And let's just go ahead and jump into those really quick. I'll go ahead and do this one. Smith calls them anti-social Rambos. And once we explain it, you're going to probably agree. Basically, the guy, when there's four of you and three of you are grouped up and taking care of each other, and then there's that one guy that's off like four buildings down checking a closet, and then all of a sudden like a baby jumps out and is on top of his face, and he's pinned down and you have to go back and get him, that's the antisocial Rambo. That's always going to be a problem in these types of games. But here, it's even worse. Uh, you know what, Smith, why don't you go ahead and take over here and explain about the crows really quick. Explain, explain how you tried to tell people not to shoot the crows. Yeah, so there's... there's sort of nests of crows all around the place. They'll just be sort of sitting there doing their thing, eating a body or whatever. Um, you usually get a mission. We had a mission at most of the levels to yeah. not disturb them, not set off any car alarms, and you get bonus money. Now, if you played the original Left 4 Dead, you would have seen this behavior many times. You know, a guy gets annoyed because he gets pounced because he's 200 foot away and he's worried, you know, why didn't you guys save me because I'm not with the rest of you? And then he shoots a car alarm, alerts the crows and leaves. You're going to have that same level of trolling here for sure. And the higher difficulties, it will be painful. Um, I think it's worth leaving the features in. You don't want to take it out just for the trolls. Yeah. But if you are playing with randoms, even on the campaign, be prepared for the fact that they can completely screw your experience if they want to. And they will. Some of them definitely will. Oh, yeah, they will, for sure. Uh, it doesn't even have to be them getting caught by a pouncer. Could be like, oh, well, I'm about to leave. Screw it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the crows are flying and all of a sudden the hordes on you just yep. like that oh we should have mentioned by the way uh, you can actually play in versus you can be one of like the baby zombies like the the not, not a baby zombie but just a normal zombie if you want it i didn't even bother trying that but yeah, that was an option um and one last thing that was kind of annoying i think this is going to be rectified in the main game there was this ogre boss and we brought it down again we were on a really normal difficulty because it was a pr event or a, 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 a preview event so you could have played on a harder difficulty but we didn't we killed this ogre boss. We killed it. It popped out of the ground. We shot it. It went back underground. Popped back up. Didn't heal. We killed it. And it didn't drop anything. It might have dropped ammo. I'm not exactly sure. But there was definitely no, like, here's an extra card or extra gun or even the uh, uh, the currency. I forget what it's called. Scrap, I think. You, you earn this scrap as you play and you can spend it uh, to get things. But yeah, it was just like, it was nothing. Now I do know killing that boss in that level means he did not come in the next level, which I guess is its own reward. But at the same time, I was it was a big enemy and I was kind of expecting something to drop out of it. What about you? Did you, did you think something was gonna get out of that ogre? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think just the experience of the shock of everyone when he comes out the ground, because it wasn't like a yeah. glitch where he comes out the ground, he busts through the floor. Oh, yeah. There's fire and brimstone and everything. And he, he's absolutely huge. He's, what, a couple of houses, two or three houses high? Yeah, we had to run into a, a tunnel, basically, to stop him from chasing us. So he was that tall. Yeah, car tunnel. No, it wasn't a small tunnel. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the fun for me in taking it down was enough, but that was the first time. The experience of all of our team collectively going, oh, holy crap, that was the reward. When you do that for the 10th time, that's not going to happen. So yeah. I do think having that mechanical reward in that little bit of progression reward would have gone a long way, but, you know, it's something easily fixed. We'll see if they do anything with it, but I think they will. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think they're going to do anything with it as well, outside of you are not going to have to face it down the line. Just before we jump into our fun factor score, share your score down below, one to five stars, and let us know what you think, or what you, I guess, will think of Back for Blood when it comes out. And just so we're clear, this is not a review score, this is more of like a how hyped we are to play the game. It was only a preview event, so we didn't get to see everything, but we're still going to give it uh, one, or five, one to five stars and a fun factor rating. And now for the fun factor score. I'm going to give Back for Blood at least the preview event, a five 
five out of five fun factor score i had a blast um i went into that game expecting probably to only play a little bit of the campaign we beat the entire first act we kept going and we wanted to play more after that which is of course a great sign pvp does have some issues but I don't know, it might grow on me. It was only one match, and if I can beat people that effectively over and over, I'm probably going to be hooked on it. What about you, Smith? What's your score? I'm going to have to come up with a fun fact, the score of five. I am hyped as hell for this game, even with the disappointment of Versus, which was my entire thing with Left 4 Dead. So even the fact that that's disappointing, the campaign was great. I'm really looking forward to scaling the difficulty up because I've played on the harder difficulties. I've played on the simple ones, and it is a different game. You know, I'm going to be able to pick it up with the other half. We'll be able to go through slowly on the easy difficulties and I can jump on with Johnny, pop it on the top stuff and get shit mixed. So I'm definitely excited for this one. I'm really hoping they build on the Left, uh, Left 4 Dead versus model. I don't want this to be the only versus mode, but I understand why it's here for now. But yeah, as it stands, I couldn't be any more hyped for this game. I am definitely ready. Now for the important question, Johnny, would you dive in with a buddy and play Back for Blood again? In a heartbeat. Uh, what about you, Smith? Would you dive back in with a buddy and play Back for Blood again? No doubt. I want to dive in right now. All right, that will do it for our Back for Blood preview. As I said earlier, there is no wheel spin today, but next week the wheel returns when we jump into Godfall. Okay, that'll do it for us. If you liked what you saw, got what you needed, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Later, Gators.